Welcome back and thanks for staying with Africa News Network First Fast Live. ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa may face an uphill battle in consolidating power within the National Executive Committee. News reports suggest that Ramaphosa's allies may be outnumbered in the NEC. Ramaphosa needs a clear majority of the stopped uh, NEC members to be on his side for him to have significant influence. However, news reports paint a picture of his allies being outnumbered. This would potentially leave open his authority to being challenged. And Ramaphosa's strength in the NEC may have uh, uh, to come from members who are said to have been nominated by both camps. And according to, to sources, here's the balance of forces in the 86-member NEC. The top six led by Ramaphosa is said to be split down the middle with some in the top brass who previously were said to be on the slate of Dr. Nkosa Zanadamini Zuma. And of the additional 80 members, 47 are said to be loyal to Dr. Zuma, while 33 are believed to be loyal to Ramaphosa. However, there are seven members who got dual nominations from both camps. And joining us in studio is Amor Madala, Radical Economic Transformation on Coalition Secretary and Adil Nchabileng, Transform RSA President. On the phone line, we have Professor Peri Hanyane, political analyst. He's a professor, <clears throat> excuse me, a professor with the University of the Northwest. Good evening to you, gentlemen, and thanks so much for joining us. And this is uh, probably the night after the morning after the night before, or however it works, that, that uh, the NEC, especially the top structure, will have to uh, look at the, the list and who's on their camp or not. Your initial reaction to the, to the list so far, Adil? It, it was a very interesting uh, conference, and good evening, the viewers, and we're happy to be back now in the studio on home grounds. It has been an incredible conference, given the magnitude of the contestation of the power. Remember, this was a split between the middle in terms of contestation of power. And really, the emerging uh, leadership right now has had to literally sacrifice each and every bit of whatever electoral vote that they received. And at the same time, it emerged with the initial proposal that there is going to be a unity slate, which is what actually emerged out of the whole conference. Even though initially it was casted out, but the overall outcome actually supported the unity slate, which has actually come up. Each and every group that wanted to contest power got something out of the entire conference. The NEC itself is very interesting because you find that there is a mix of candidates from previously and there's a mix of candidates who are now new into the you know, NEC election and have been actually given the NEC top uh, 80 seat. And uh, the most interesting thing about it is the same numbers are still split. You have half on one side that supported, uh, you know, current president Cyril Ramaphosa, and then you have the half that supported the, you know, uh, candidate who was actually contesting for presidency, who was NDZ. So it's a very interesting contestation of political power, where you see that the ANC has now showed that it could run the most contested conference successfully peacefully as well as in an amicable way whereby results were announced there was only one contender particularly for the race of the secretary general who had an issue but overall the entire thing went very smooth and the whole process of the conference was conducted in a most professional manner the issues and deliberations and actually debates were very robust but there was never a conflict in between whereby people felt that this is the time now to destroy the NC. So it's quite something to really to be appreciated. Given the fact that it was a massive conf conference as well and the timelines had to be bled, you know, the President Ramaphosa had to give a speech almost after midnight in terms of closing the conference. So overall, we must congratulate the ANC for carrying out a really wonderful conference and giving hope back to South Africa. The outcomes of the resolutions were very interesting because I think that was a tailspin that not everyone expected, that there will be some serious radical decisions taken as well as pronounced as outcomes of the conference based on resolutions that the delegates who went to conference went and argued for and actually walked away with policy sets that they're all happy today. Yeah, and just at face value, is it is it accurate to say at least 47, almost 50 percent, are supporters of Dr. Nkosa Zanadamini Zuma, and that could potentially create some form of conflict or friction uh, for Cyril Ramaphosa at the helm of the ANC? Well, good evening, Cindy, and the viewers at home. Um, I think before conference we could have had that discussion. Right now, I think there is no such thing. There is no more NTZ camp, there is no CR17 camp. 
What you have is an ANC NEC that is responsible for the ANC between now and 2022. At the end of the day, those top 80, those 80 additional members have got their own political aspirations. And I don't think they're going to attach themselves to somebody who lost beyond. I mean, politics, you know, they say 24 hours is a long time in, in, in politics. It's almost like a year. So people flip-flop. I mean, there was, there was a lot of talk about that Didi Mabuza had sold out the NDZ camp and all of that. But in politics, it's politics. And I wouldn't sit and say that out of the whole 80-member NEC, you are going to find that these people are going to lean more NDZ and these ones are going to lean more CR. I think that is gone. And I think the first steps of you seeing that is that the president of the ANC himself first controlled the whole issue of the 68 votes and spoke to his camp and it was dealt with politically. So what is going to happen is that there's going to be a whole unity thing happening. Our biggest questions that are going to come is that, yes, at the first NEC, and we, I think we can all expect this, there will be a motion tabled to recall the president. The question is, those, 80 indivi those 86 individuals, because they will all be sitting together, how are they going to debate the motion and vote on it? Because whatever they do, they are the custodians of the ANC between now and 2022. So whatever happens to the ANC in the 2019 elections, as much as anyone may want to scream and say that Zuma this, Zuma that, all of that doesn't count anymore. All that will ever happen is that if the fortunes of the ANC go down, the ANC takes responsibility. If the fortunes of the ANC go up, they will take responsibility. So at the end of the day, they're going to have to sit and make a political decision. My look at it is that you have um, individuals like the Praveen Godans, the Derek Hanekoms, those that have come out and clearly put themselves against radical economic transformation. And Zuma. Well, let's forget the personalities because the, that particular personality is now out of the picture. He's got 18, 19 months left. So we can no longer put him into the frame of anything that's going to be executed. I believe when he announced free, free education for, for students, that was his last master stroke. And now you can take him to pension. He'll be happy. Because at the end of the day, it still has to be executed. All right, let's, just, Zamo, let's just get to Professor Berhanyan, because I really want to deal with this issue of unity at all costs. Uh, Professor Hanyani, thank you so much for your time. Is, is it in such a way that uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, in your view, may not be enjoying the majority support uh, in the NEC, the extended members at least, and that could uh, create a problem, especially when it comes to whatever resolutions may come forward. Zamo referred to uh, what we've been told that uh, especially in uh, business interests, have been wanting uh, Ramaphosa, uh, the, the, uh, or rather for Jacob Zuma, to be recalled with immediate effect, that this would be his litmus test as to how far his uh, presidency will be appreciated. Professor Hanyani? Hello? All right. Um, Adil, oh, sorry, maybe just conclude your thought. It, 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 does, does he lack the support uh, in pushing uh, resolutions that he might want or that he may believe in? I, I actually don't think so. In fact, I think the biggest loser here was the SACP because they pronounced that they could decide to go the elections their own way. Only Kosatu was recognizing that and, and unions in that there's Dumo Zamini still there, um, Miss Lossi is still there. But there's no Bladen Zibande, Rob Davies, Tulas Nayesi. All of the communists were put one side because the communists had threatened the ANC and said we could go it alone. So I think the ANC members said, oh, because you are now saying you could be out of the alliance, we will not want to put you in our top structure. So the biggest loser was really the SACP. In terms of the ANC itself, I believe this unity and the central democratism of the ANC will hold. The only question is, when they sit down, and I, I wouldn't want to call it in which way they would vote, but I would call it cutting the nose to spite off the face to rush to call, to recall President Zuma, unless as the months go ahead, he, believe, he begins to act in a way that is outside Lutulu. Mm. I believe um, Minister Figilam Balula yesterday said it quite frankly, to say the NEC is the controlling body. 
So whatever happens, the two centers of power, which is actually not really two centers of power, the president of the ANC is in the presidency. He's just not the president. He's the deputy president. So whatever actions the president takes, he will be right there next to him. Yeah, but we do know that people pay their allegiance to a particular leader. You know, to say it's unity and it's all noble because that's the party line. But, uh, you know, there's the allocation or portion of a particular camp. Even to this day, you say this one is a Tabumbik, is a TM boy, this one is a Zuma or, or uh, Mandela boy, whatever it is. There, there is always that kind of very strong support and allegiance to a, a, a personality, whether we want to admit it or not. How is it going to play out? We have Zuelim Kize, Lindy, we have Zulu. It's a whole mix. Uh, you have even Titombo, any former governor of Reserve Bank. We know what his uh, um, uh, feelings or you know, criticism has been about the party. We have Dr. Nkosa Lamini Zuma. I'm sure there will be some form. There will be tension, one. They, they would have to navigate the dynamics in, in, in that particular group. I think as, uh, as members of civil societies and actually ground, uh, grassroots based organizations, it will be presumptuous for us to start saying the ANC is united and the ANC is going to have this most wonderful rainbow kind of a, you know, ideological, you know, synergy going through and going forward. No, it's not going to happen. There's going to still be some robust discussions internally. There's going to still be some robust disagreements on certain issues, particularly what you're already seeing, that the mainstream you know, views are already opposing some of the outcomes coming out of the resolutions of the conference. There is already contention over most of the resolutions that were passed, particularly with relation to interests that are already affecting both aspects of South African social life as well as economic life. So, the ANC has its own task, has its own set of, uh, you know, sort of objectives to go and start working on. The unity idea to say that there will be unity is presumptuous at this stage and it's quite use wishful. It's not going to happen at this stage, but there will be a harmonizing of some form, like how they managed to pull up this most incredible huge conference to ensure that there is at least a sort of, you know, a, a damage limitation where there is no longer contestation on the basis of people representing camp interest. But that does not mean the aspect of people who came in to vote for a delegate for a particular position are going to now give up their interest in terms of the policy imperatives as well as the leadership interests that are currently being pushed. So this current, current conference still has a way to go. 2019 is going to be the deciding factor because currently there is already one issue that they have to deal with. January come January, kids are going back to school, particularly university students. They have to make sure that that bill for free education is going to be provided for. When people arrive at universities, they're not going to be hustled and be told that, look, the bill was passed, but we're not ready. So those are some of the key impediments that they have to now go and start discussing around and saying, what do we do from now, making sure that when January hits, we're ready with the policies that have already been pronounced, and we are going to make sure that we keep on the promise that has already been made. So the aspect that there's not going to be disagreements is presumptuous at the stage. Yeah, and I mean, that's why there's a contestation in It's a the contestation place, of ideas. You know, you then put your best uh, case forward as to what you stand for. You convictions, ideals, and that's why there seems to be a threat that there is, you know, Cyril Ramaphosa may have won, but Gosazana's policies permeate, or are the ones that, are, that, that actually um, are victorious, in your view, Zama? Right. Firstly, I'll disagree with both of you. The policies Come that went... I'm just asking the Yeah, question. the policies that came through are <laughs> ANC policies. The policies that NDZ was running on were ANC policies. It was policies that came out of July conference. Let's be clear on that. It was not she came up with radical economic transformation. It's a policy from Manga Wung. It's been there. The only thing now is that the ANC is saying, let's aggressively push it forward. The Reserve Bank story, the land without, um, land without expropriation, without compensation, and then on top of it, the free education. Though, that's just the three of them. Yes, now the South African Reserve Bank, yes, has come out and said, no, it can't be done. And yes, agri assay has come out and said, no, it can't be done. And yes, you're going to get that contesting voice. But the NEC, as they sit, they are not the state. They are responsible for the ANC. There are ministers within that NEC who must still, yes, come out, like Malusi Kikaba. He now has to go, not in his capacity as an NEC member, in his capacity as finance minister, he needs to go and tell his department that, Tinker with the numbers and do something because somehow, somewhere, we need to ensure the varsity is that, yes, you're not going to charge a registration fee. And uh, children that have um, parents that only earn 350000 uh, per annum or under 
are not going to pay for the year's tuition. When and how they're going to find the money, he'll probably take time until financial year in March. But the reality of the NEC is that it's going to be the fight of, does Cyril Ramaphosa keep the president sitting in Mahlambandlovu for the next 19 months, or do they recall him and he ascends right now? And that's a fine balancing act that they're going to have to play. There are people in that NEC that, that are that, bitter. Yeah, is that, is that the most urgent in your view? <clears throat> Excuse me, as opposed to, as you're saying, we're three, mm. what, a couple of weeks away before school resumes. Open and universities, Exactly. Yeah. Is, is that, in your view, that the one that could be a deal maker or deal breaker, whether Zuma goes or not, uh, and, and whether, which camp you know, just uh, to wins on, this debate in the NEC? Just to add on what Zamo said, the, the test for any metal is based on the ability to carry out the promises that were made. If we're saying this was an ANC policy and they're all united behind the decisions made, we will test it in January. We have a week or two weeks left before the universities are opening. If the ANC pulls that feat, it will be the most incredible feat, by the way, ever achieved by any government in the last 25 years. And we wish that that promise for free education get fulfilled. But let's not even waste our time on what they are going to do. Let's focus on what has already happened. You have an NEC that is six men. In that six men, there's only one woman. It's already problematic. Because now there has been really a clear defeat on the basis that ANC is supposed to be leading on the basis of the balance of female as well as male candidates and the aspect of a non-sexist movement. Already at the top leadership level, there's been already a fracture. That is not something that has gone unnoticed, by the way. A lot of people have picked up on it. A lot of key critics have said to them that to actually raise the voices to say that we are getting disappointed because we had hoped that there would be a balance in terms of the representation but of the women symbolism of on the, the top board. six, yes, Adele. Um, and and uh, if you take the, the rest of the composition of the NEC that has Barbara Creasy, Mam uh, Susan Shabango, uh, Mildred Wolifant, uh, Nomvola Mokonyana, Dr. Mkosa Zana, Lamini Zuma, very strong uh, woman there that obviously would stand their ground, not necessarily agitate for a more uh, a feminist stance in the representation of um, gender in the, in the party. But I'm saying mm. in, in decision making, they would be equally, uh, or their voice has, has got equal weight whether the Reserve Bank is nationalized, whether education will be uh, free or not, or, or, or do they not have a choice? They just simply have to follow what the leader says. Well, in my opinion, it's quite simple. I think conferences dictated what they must go and deliver. Theirs is to find out how they are going to deliver it. Free education will happen for kids with parents earning less than 350,000. Come hell or high water or else, the fees must fall March will look like a joke. The past one. The Reserve Bank, whether the, the Reserve Bank itself receives its mandate from the state, they do not dictate their own mandate. So they can yap all they want. But if government comes out and gives an instruction, that the ANC policies need to be transferred to the state and the state must execute. And right now, the state is under President Zuma. So if I were the ANC president, Cyril Ramaphosa, I would certainly not want to remove President Zuma just yet. So that if there's any failing, it is not attached to me because I was my still campaign in 2019. I would leave him there. That's why I'm saying that this NEC is actually tasked with a very heavy task. There are those who are bitter, who would say they want to remove him now. But then there's the reality of the 2019 election. And part of campaigning is that you need to try and satisfy the majority that you need to vote for you. You've come up with populist policies. So you need to start putting some of it into real life. They've said that 13% of land that sits under traditional leaders needs to be transferred to the people. The next question is the, how are you going to do it? In KZN, for instance, I come from a, a tribal area. I know it all sits under the Ingonyama Trust and I know the difficulty that it takes for you to end up with a 20-year lease or whatever it is that I, I will not give it <laughs> a name here. It, it, it's cumbersome. And then on top of that, you need to get the land bank to get involved because once you do that and you've given people title, right, then what must they do with the land? They can't just live on it. They must live off it. Mm. which means you need to drive agriculture, you need to drive... And, and that needs you as the state to take a position. Now, whether the ANC president will want to take that responsibility into his hands now and not sit and take some time to figure out 
how he fits his new deal into these radical policies that he must now go and implement and has agreed to in his speech last night. I would definitely want to buy myself the time. So the 18 months is the least I would take to work out how I would do it rather than to rush. Yeah, and, and the democratic centralism, I think, has sort of got everybody pinned down in that mm. whatever the majority decides, uh, whether you as the president or the top 10 may feel in a particular way, or as you're saying, those that are disgruntled or bitter because they camp may or slate lost, um, they, they simply have to live with it and go with what the majority mm. says. I, I'm going to say this again. We are extremely presumptuous. The Reserve Bank issue was brought up already in July. The Reserve Bank refused to follow on the mandate that was already recommended. The issue of the State Bank was already mentioned in July to say that the, the actual Reserve Bank must create a license option to say make sure that South Africa has a State Bank. So some of these things, we might dream about it that there will be so-called rainbow miracles that are going to happen. Suddenly something appears out of nowhere because the rain has settled. It's not going to happen that way. There's still going to be contestation and it's going to be very heavy and robust. All all we wish for is that the promise that have been made, remember it's 15 months, it's no longer even uh, two years, it's 15 months before the ANC arrives at the polls and has to deliver again another successful election where they will either be elected back into power or there will be a contending power where there is already a possibility by the, analyst, the uh, analytical views that we're hearing that with currently going towards elections. A lot of young people have abstained previously. We're going to have a situation whereby people are starting to measure as to whether they are going to participate in the next coming 2019 election and what is the benefit that they are going to be deriving out of it. The issue of radical economic transformation is not new. It's a policy which was already implemented, was already resolved on in Mangaung in 2012. Mm -hmm. What has been done in terms of its implementation? Come back to the aspect of black industrialists. What has been done in terms of the implementation of the policy of black industrialists? So we have to ask the real questions. Yeah, we, can know, we can hear the promises. We can find fault. We can all yeah, have a number but of But at the same time, of, we of are saying... Highlight all the things that have yeah. gone wrong, which is the easier part. But we're saying with the current uh, new leadership that we find ourselves in, and especially mm. their differing ideology on, number one, the result Reserve Bank is going to be a sticky one, having Correct. the former governor of the Reserve Bank there uh, as well. The issue of uh, higher education has been defended by uh, many economists or analysts, uh, you know, saying that the economy can't afford where we're going to get the money, and yet there's money that is siphoned out of the country. So there's all, all of these blind spots that are not being uh, accommodated. So how is it going to work with this bunch of new leadership? Oh, the funny bit is this. The president, as he was outgoing, made a declaration. Free education will happen. The only question is that, how is it going to transfer from Lutulu House to Masambandlov, into Treasury and wherever else, and it turning into real money? That's where the fine line lies, in that the NEC, as much as they've got power, they've got power within the ANC. Yes, some are ministers already sitting. Like Batavile Lamine is there. There's the Sasa saga. We've got an issue. By, by next year, yeah, I hate to margin. break your word. So it's yeah. not a battle of ideas at this point. It's simply on how to, to find the best mechanism yeah. to, to implement policy. We don't it. have the time there's to no, come there, with a no. counter argument why it cannot or cannot you know, work or, or uh, whether it's possible. But you know what is interesting, Cindy? You still have opposition parties that are waiting with a legal, lethal dagger that are going to step on each and every move that the ANC is going to be moving into in order to ensure that they actually smoothly implement their policies. So the outcomes are wonderful. This has been one of the most watershed, groundbreaking conference with all the resolutions that the South Africans were looking forward to. Land restitution, uh, land expropriation without compensation, the aspect of free education, which was an executive decision, by the way. It was not something that was decided in willy-nilly at the conference. The executive decision was taken before the conference started, and it said that there will be provision of free education by January 2018. That is where the test is going to come through, and if that gets carried through, the ANC will become the biggest star and the biggest winner in terms of going back to delivering the 25-year dream we've all been waiting for and we've all been looking for. So it will be a very interesting time to look forward to. And we're quite saying to the NC, is. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I do think the, the best that you the can developments over and the show past us what you made of. days has given us almost a, a renewed faith and a, a different perspective on how or where this country is going. Thanks so much, uh, Dylan Chabele, Transform you. RSA President, and Zamo Mandala as Radical Economic Transformation Coalition uh, Secretary. And you at home, uh, thanks indeed for watching. We'll take a quick break. We'll see you shortly.